So as Shashnita mentioned, I'm going to take a session on uh, build your uh, Azure uh, data factory pipeline. That means your first pipeline. Uh, let me share my screen. Before that, I just want uh, uh, to know whether uh, anyone already working with uh, data factory. Can you please raise your hand uh, in the meeting? Click on the hand raise button. Just want to know. So there is working. Yes, that is working. Okay, fine. So I'm going to uh, show how to build your uh, data factory from scratch. Okay. So let me share my screen. We will uh, go over the PPT. I'm going to cover a uh, list theory part. Once I completed it, I'm going to uh, show you the Azure portal. Then uh, from there, we will see how to build our actual pipeline. Please let me know once you can able to see my screen. Yes, it's visible. So this is Azure portal. OK, so uh, if you want to navigate to this, you can go with the portal.azure.com and you want to have a subscription. So if you are uh, eager to learn Azure, you can go with the free subscription or if you're already having your organization subscription or any uh, any other subscription you can go with that. OK, so in this today we are going to see about data factory. OK, so uh, before starting with data factory, uh, let me uh, tell you about all the key components that is present in data factory and uh, how to start uh, building it. OK, so let me share the PPT. I hope you all can see my uh, presentation. Yes, it's visible. Yeah. So yeah, about me, I'm working as a senior data engineer with Hitachi Solutions. I'm also a MCT and a C Sharp MVP, and uh, I work uh, mostly on uh, data, so like uh, data factory, data bricks, and uh, other data engineering activities. Okay. So so today agenda, uh, we are going to see about uh, data factory, and we are going to see about the ADF components and how we can configure the copy data activity and how we can schedule it, the basic transformation, how we can do all those things. We are going to see. OK, uh, this is about the Azure uh, structure. Actually, uh, this is not related to data factory. This is how in Azure we will have our resources created. OK, so the uh, the hierarchy comes from management group. A single management group can have multiple subscription and uh, each subscription can have multiple resource group. OK, so inside the resource group only we will be creating our resources. So uh, in a previous session uh, using the ARM template, uh, uh, they are creating the Azure resources, right? Each and every resource will go and sit inside a resource group. The resource group is nothing but a logical container. So what is resource? Resource, anything is a, a service that you are going to get from Azure is a resource, okay? So Azure Data Factory is also one of the resource. So that only I show the, I am I, showing this uh, hierarchy to you all. So what is ADF? ADF comprises of these many components, okay? So to build a ADF, Pipeline, we need to know what is pipeline, what is activity, data set, link service, integration runtime, trigger, and data flow. Each and every component is very important. Okay, Each and everything plays a vital role in its own uh, way. So we are going to understand all these components. Then it is very easy to build our pipeline. So this is the basic architecture. As I said, uh, we need to uh, understand uh, each and everything separately. This is how the overall structure looks. Okay, so the entire thing is called as an Azure Data Factory pipeline. Okay, in this pipeline, if you see here, uh, let me. Yeah. So this is the input. Okay. So this. Input, we are going to move to a SQL Server. This input is uh, in blob storage. Okay, so blob storage is, not, is nothing but uh, Azure storage. Okay, in Azure we have blob storage as well as uh, data lake uh, Gen2. So this is a blob storage. You have a CSV file. Now your client is asking you to move the CSV file to a SQL Server. How you can move with the help of a data factory? You can create a pipeline and uh, move this uh, files from the source to destination. For moving, you need to have the linker service, you need to have the integration runtime, you need to have the data set, you need to have the activity. Then this complete thing is called as pipeline. Okay, the complete thing is called as pipeline. So only we are going to concentrate on each and everything. Any doubt till here? You, you all got some idea, right? What we are going to see now in, in this session? Any doubts? Can I consider the silence as no? 
to the next slide so this is basically what we do okay first we will connect and collect the data connect in the sense you might have uh, n number of sources right for example consider a e-commerce company they will have uh, sources from different entities from mobile application they will get uh, user information from web application they will get uh, user information or any uh, service they are taking all those are different sources so from different sources we are going to connect and collect the data we are going to transform and enrich the data then we are going to publish the pipeline and we are going to monitor it okay so this is how the flow works in adf and uh, this is how the internal adf architecture works uh, i said right uh, we need to have data set we need to have activity combination of one or more activity is called as pipeline okay so what is pipeline is a logical group of activity see pipeline is a logical group of activity so activity consists of the data set movement of data okay so no need to worry about these uh, technical uh, components from now we are going to see the demo okay so in azure portal i will directly show you how it every every each and every component uh, looks and uh, how you can configure it okay just understand the terms as of now so uh, the first thing is we need to know what is ir okay so in the components list i showed let me go back to the slide okay in the component list this is the components okay so in this integration runtime is the first thing we need to look okay then we need to look about linked services once you can figured integration time then you need to work on linked service one linked services is done you need to work on data sets once data set is done you need to concentrate on activities activities is done build your pipeline then uh, if you want to include data flow or uh, simply have only the control flows okay this is optional this is optional then finally after completing this 1 2 3 4 5 steps you are going to create a trigger for your pipeline so this is the hierarchy okay so understand the hierarchy integration runtime linked service data set activities and pipeline so first we will see what is integration runtime so integration runtime is nothing but a computing uh, unit okay so simply uh, how i can say is uh, for example in your uh, laptop or in your desktop you are having some data i want to get that data how i can get it first i need to connect to your machine right uh, there should be some authentication to connect to your machine so i need to connect means uh, that is integration runtime simply you can assume in that way okay so for example if it is an on premises then i can uh, install an application ir ir application in your machine and i can get the data or if it is a cloud i have azure uh, integration runtime itself auto resolve integration runtime so these are the two integration runtime we have one more integration runtime that is azure ssis integration runtime okay so for example previously uh, previous to this adf and all we used to have this ssis packages okay that is a sql server integration services so in your organization if you are having any existing ssis package and you want to lift and shift into adf so that time you can use azure ssis integration runtime so these three are the types of integration runtime okay azure is a default one whenever you create a data factory it will come by default self hosted is for when you want to connect to any on premises azure ssis is for when you want to connect to any existing ssis package so first in the hierarchy the first one is integration runtime and we know there are three integration runtimes and we know when to use which one any doubt in this any queries so now uh, this this chart allows you to understand when to use which okay so for example above this dotted line everything is the data everything is in cloud below this dotted line the data is in on premises okay so now if you see the source and destination both are in cloud then what integration runtime you will use you need to okay i'll come from here source and destination both are in cloud what integration runtime you will use you will use integration runtime azure the default integration runtime you can call it as azure auto resolved integration runtime okay here your source and destination both are in cloud but you want to execute the existing ssis package me zoom in bit you want to execute the uh, existing ssis package at that time what you need to use you need to use the in azure ssis integration runtime even though the data is in cloud if you want to execute ssis go with azure ssis okay then coming here your source is in cloud your destination is in on premises then you need to use self hosted integration runtime okay here if you see your source is in cloud your destination is in on premises so you need to use azure ssis because you are going to execute a ssis package but here 
your source is also in cloud destination is also in cloud but even though you are using a self hosted why because this is present inside a virtual network so we need to consider this as a separate entity and you need to use a self hosted only okay so this is how you need to choose when to use which integration runtime any doubt in this uh, decision making of which integration runtime to choose uh, which scenario yes no can you able to uh, understand this concept it will be good if i hear any response am i audible yes 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 yeah. it's oh, useful fine. and we are we are following you yeah fine. Oh, thanks for that. So now, uh, so we know the concepts, theoretical concepts, and all we know. Okay, now we are going to build our uh, first uh, data factory pipeline. Okay, so let me let me share my Azure portal screen. Okay, so this is Azure portal. Now I want to create a Azure Data Factory services. So you can choose it from here. This is the home page. Or if you want, if it is not here, this is a recent services that you, that I used. Okay, if you want to search, you can go and search as Data Factory. It will come Data Factories. You can choose it from here, or else if you go to the Create Resource under the Analytics category, you will find this Data Factory. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new data factory resource. So I hope you all know how to create a resource. Just uh, I'm going in the flow. I need to choose a subscription. So we need to create a resource group. Or if you already have any resource group, you can go with the same resource group. I'm just creating a new resource group saying Global Azure Pune. And uh, now I need to give a name for my uh, data factory. So I'm just giving ADF Pune 2023. So region I'm choosing as East US. There is only one version that is V2. Next Git. So if you want to configure your ADF with uh, Git and uh, create your own branches and uh, collaborate with your uh, within your team, you can configure uh, now itself by providing all your DevOps uh, information here, project name and all. But if you think like uh, first I will develop, then I will configure it later. Then you can say configure Git later. So I'm giving it a git. I will configure it later. Okay. Then these are all networking and all public endpoint, or if you want to create any private endpoint only to access within uh, some endpoints, you can go with a private endpoint. But as of now, I'm going with a public endpoint. It all depends on your uh, requirement or your client requirement, whether you want to go with a public or private endpoint. Then uh, this is like uh, data factory en encryption. So by default, uh, your uh, data is encrypted with Microsoft managed keys, or if you want to specifically encrypt with any customer managed key, you need to provide those customer managed keys and encrypt, but I'm going with the default one. Tags is common for all the Azure resources. It is useful to identify which category it belongs to. Like, uh, for example, I'm creating a, a tag called uh, environment, okay? And I'm saying this as a, a dev environment. So now this resource belongs to a dev environment, Later on, if I go and search in the tags for DEV as an environment, it will list out all the resources that belongs to this environment. Okay, so it is optional. Okay, so I'm going just I'm reviewing and creating a new data factory resource. Validation passed. It may take a few seconds to get uh, created. Data factory, I didn't give an introduction about data factory, I think, right? Data, data factory is nothing but a cloud-based ETL tool, we can say, okay? So you can perform all your uh, ETL activities uh, in the Azure, okay? So that is a cloud-based, so it got created. Let me go inside it. So this is the data factory service that we created. And if you want to work, you need to launch the studio. Okay, so this is 
our uh, data factory studio so here uh, you can uh, create manage monitor okay all those things uh, you can do it here if you see this is the home page and see here it is asking to set up the code repository since i gave uh, configure git later it is asking me whether you want to configure it now i'm just saying i'm just closing that because later on we can do that uh, from the manage tab okay this is the home page and in this author tab only we are going to create our pipelines configure our data sets and all and this is a monitor tab so here you are you can go and monitor your uh, pipelines after once you created a pipeline you can go here and see whether it is running or failed okay the failure reasons all those things if you created a trigger and if you say that uh, run this pipeline at every day 9 am so it will be available under the trigger runs so here you can go and see last 24 hours or the last 30 days what is the run and any failures are there like that okay and uh, monitor tab and uh, in the manage tab you can go and uh, manage your resource like uh, you can uh, create integration run time you can configure the git from here since uh, we said uh, configure later right it will be asking you to configure now okay so you can configure from this uh, git configuration page so now uh, through the hierarchy we need to uh, create the integration run time first am i right because we saw right uh, from the hierarchy IRS is going to be the first uh, thing we need to create okay so if i see under the manage tab i have a integration run time i said right azure having a default integration run time that is called as uh, auto resolved integration run time i didn't created any ir right by default i just created a data factory by default it is coming so if you are dealing with any data that is present in cloud okay then you can use this integration run time but if you feel that uh, my source data destination data belongs to on premises then you can click on new integration run time you can select this azure self hosted but if you feel that uh, you want to execute any SS- existing SS- ssis package you can create this resource sorry you can create this ir okay so let i will just show you how to create the self hosted so it will ask for name i am just giving self hosted uh, connect to on prem what app okay so now what it will give us it will give me a key and a, a executable application if you see here it will give a key and uh, it will ask me to download this uh, ir application so uh, there should be some on premises system right uh, in that on premises system we need to download this uh, application and install it there once the application got installed it will ask the key you can use any of any of this key there okay if you apply this key and uh, uh, click on save what will happen just i'm closing it so now it is uh, what it is unresponsive unavailable right so once you uh, pasted the key there and saved here it will get connected to that machine okay so then uh, from then what you can do you can connect you can uh, connect to the machine and you can get the data from it so that is basically self hosted but uh, now for this demo i'm going to deal with uh, cloud based data so okay my source is going to be azure data lake uh, my source is going to be in the azure storage account and i'm going to move the data to the azure storage account itself so i am i can use this auto resolved uh, integration run time itself okay any doubt till this uh, integration run time creation Uh, arun uh, can you repeat that key section again yeah so i created the self hosted integration run time right uh, self hosted integration run time why i created i want to connect to any of the on premises system okay consider you are having some on premises sql okay and uh, you want to fetch the query uh, means you want to write a select query in that on premises sql server and get the data using the azure data factory so now i want to connect to the on premises sql server so for that i need to in- install this application in the on premises sql server okay uh, there will be a, a rdp for that sql server install this particular integration runtime in that machine once you open this application it will ask for the key okay this is like a, you are you are uh, giving the authorization between this data factory and the on premises machine so you need to paste this key there copy the key and paste it in that on premises uh, application where you installed it so once you pasted it and saved here it will showing as running it will show as running you got that uh, yeah uh, what if uh, I, i have to create uh, another integration runtime for the same uh, sql server machine that is uh, on premises yeah. so i use the same key or uh, 
how how it will work uh, do i have to create integration runtime for every new pipeline or data factory or like that no, or, or if, if it is going it. to be the uh, you can reuse it if it is going to be the same on premises server so uh, for example consider your laptop is going to be the destination okay i am going to move some data to your laptop once i created a self hosted integration runtime to your laptop that is enough uh how many times i can connect to it and whichever folder i want to access i can access so the folder level access is something different next we are going to do that but once i entered into a machine i can get the data so that is one time so you can reuse the integration runtime if the if the system right. is going to be same no all right clear thanks okay okay so now coming to uh, now we created the integration runtime right in the hierarchy next is linked services right so now uh, i connected to your laptop but i need to fetch the data from it uh, for example you are having a local disk uh, d drive inside the d drive you are having a input folder now i want to connect to that local disk d first so that is called as linked services okay so if i go to link service it will ask me to create a link service here it will have uh, n number of connectors whatever connection you want you can connect it uh, for example if it is um, disk if you want to connect to any azure data lake storage account gen2 or blob storage okay or file storages any azure sql if you want to connect you can connect okay or if you want to connect to any ftp this is a file system okay so you can choose what kind of uh, system you are going to get connected for example if uh, i am going to connect to your laptop or something means i will go with the file system okay already i have a self hosted integration runtime and i have this file system using this file system i will connect to your local disk d okay so now i have access only to local disk d you will be having local disk c d e f but using this linked service i will get connected to local disk d okay so that is linked service but in our case uh, let me show you uh, the storage account what actually we are going to do consider uh, you have a client the client is saying uh, hey, i am going to push a data into a storage account okay so this is my storage account blob test uh, 77222 okay i am going to push a data to this uh, demo container folder this advanced data engineering with data bricks dot dbc file so my requirement is to move this data from this folder to a different folder uh, which folder is they want the output in output demo folder okay so now tell me uh, my source is what system my destination is what system can anyone tell me whether both are in cloud or one in cloud and one in on prem both are in cloud right my source is this container my source is demo container my destination is output demo that is also a azure storage account only so both are cloud services so for source and destination cloud means what kind of integration runtime i can use azure auto resolve integration runtime you can use right because uh, my source is also in cloud and destination is also in cloud okay so we can use auto resolve integration runtime itself so now uh, using the linked service till the storage account i can get connected okay like how we connected to the local disk d right like that till the storage account i can get connected let me show you i am going to create a linked service so here mine is a blob storage azure blob storage i'm going to say linked service underscore blob container okay it will ask uh, uh, where your uh, system is okay uh, means where your container is it is under the subscription i need to choose a storage account name okay see it is allowing me until the storage account only but my data is present inside the storage account this is storage account inside the storage account my data is present inside this container but linked service will give connection up to the system only okay it will not give the connection to the data set itself for the data set we have the next hierarchy that is data set we will go to that next okay so now i am just going to test the connection and create this linked service okay this test is successful so now i created a linked service so using this linked service now we can connect to that uh, blob test uh, 772022 uh, storage account anytime okay i created this linked service 
So in that hierarchy, integration runtime is completed, linked service is completed. Next one is data set. Okay. So for creating a data set, we can go to the author tab. Here you will have a data set. Let me create a new data set. So now I know my data set is present inside a storage account. So I need to choose Azure Blob Storage. And my data is a, a binary file. Okay. So you can choose which type of file you are using. Mine is a .dbc file, which is a, going to be a binary file. And I'm going to say data set underscore this uh, DS underscore for data set and uh, LS underscore for linked service, IR underscore for integration runtime and all some uh, naming convention preferred by uh, Azure itself. Okay. Because by seeing itself, you'll get to know that is a data set that is a linked service like that. I'm going to say data set source. So for this data set, it is asking for the linked service. Okay. Already created a linker service, so I can able to select it from it. But if you're not having a linker service created already, you can go and create it on the fly. Okay. But I already created it and it is asking me inside that storage account. Okay. Using the linker service, it identified blob 7.7.2022 is the uh, container. Inside the container, where your file is, because that is data set, right? Inside your local disk DE, you're having an input folder. That input folder is my data set. So it is asking me, so I'm choosing demo container. This is going to be my file. Okay. So now I created a source data set. I'm going to create a destination data set. Okay. So my destination is also now Azure blob only. Okay. So I'm choosing the same Azure blob. It's a binary file. So I'm saying data source data set underscore destination. It is asking linker service. See, I'm using the same linker service here because this destination is also present in the same blob container only, blob uh, 0707 only. So I'm using the same linker service. But if my destination is going to be a different uh, blob container or if it is going to be a SQL server, then I cannot use this linker service. I need to create a new linker service which is going to point to that particular destination. Okay. So I create a, I am selecting the same linker service. Now it is asking for the destination. So I know my client said put the data in the output demo. I said output demo. So now, now I have created source data set and destination data set. Okay. So after creating this, I can directly go and create a pipeline. Let me minimize all those things. So this is a canvas. So whatever you keep here, that is called as a pipeline. So pipeline is what? More than one or two activities is called as pipeline logical grouping of activities pipeline. Okay. Where you will get the activities. These are all the activities. Okay. So you can have copy data activity, uh, data flow activity. If you're having any synapse uh, uh, notebooks, you can call it here. And if you have any data bricks notebook, you can call that notebook from here. And you have all the general uh, uh, activities here. If you want to loop, if you want to delete something, if you want to get the metadata of some file, all those things will be available here. So in, in this demo, I'm just going to show you how the copy data works. Okay. That means how the data movement works here. So I'm, I'm taking this copy data activity. So in this copy data activity, now I'm going to configure the source and destination. So in the general tab, it will ask for any name. I'm, I'm just going to say move data. You can give whatever the name you want. Okay. Move data. And a description, if you want, you can give. Okay. I'm just, it's optional and a timeout. So this is simply like any other timeout. Okay. Uh, like if this activity is going to be run more than 12 hours, it will say that activity fails. Okay. So if you know that uh, it is, it should not run more than one hour then you can say one hour as a timeout. Retry is something, uh, a cool feature here. For example, uh, this copy data is getting connected uh, with some of the uh, destination, which is in uh, on premises. Okay. And it couldn't be able to connect at the first attempt. It will fail. Okay, if you're not going to configure this retry, then it will fail. But uh, you know, the second attempt or the third attempt, it will connect because we know, right? Uh, Any time uh, network issue may come. So no need to, no need of any manual intervention in those cases. So what you can do, you can say retry for three times in the interval of 30 seconds. So what will happen? This copy data, if it fails, it will retry for next three times. Okay. If in the first retry itself, if it succeeded, then fine, it will go to the next activity. Okay. So next activity in the sense, for example, I can have uh, one more activity here just for reference. So if this copy data completed, it will go to the 
next activity okay but uh, in the second attempt also if it fails it will wait for 30 seconds and it will uh, attempt the third attempt okay in the third attempt auto also if it fails this copy rate activity will fail okay so that is how this retry is going to help us so this this retry okay so now to have a sorry okay so this is the copy data and uh, general i explained right so in the source data if i come to the source tab it is asking for the source data set okay i already created source and destination data set so now it is easy for me to select from the list if it is not if you are not if you didn't create the data set before you can come here and create the data set okay but i already created so i'm choosing from the list so i can say ds source okay so this is a source data set then sync i can choose ds underscore destination so it depends upon what kind of uh, now i have chosen blob storage right so since this is a blob storage based on the blob it will give you the options here and based on the blob it is giving the options if you are choosing source and sync as a sql server then for that connector what are the options available it will show here it totally depends on uh, connectors to connectors okay so now i just added the source and sync okay. now let me go demo container i have a file okay then in the output demo i don't have any file okay but my requirement is to move that file from there to here okay so what i can do is simply i configured it just i'm going to debug this means i'm going to run this uh, pipeline see what happens so this is how we uh, debug the pipeline during the development phase we will uh, debug it and see before uh, creating the triggers and all See here, it is queued. It will take few seconds to start it. It is in progress. It got succeeded. Okay, that means this copy data activity completed its its own activity, whatever it is meant for. So you, I have given the source and sync. So it will move the data from the source to sync. That is meant for this copy data. Okay. Now I go to output demo. If I see here. i can see the file okay so this copy data activity will do its job like move the data from source to destination like this we have n number of activities here okay so each and every activity uh, serves its uh, own requirement for example if i take this general tab iteration conditionals okay so if you want to loop this copy data and then what you can do you have this for each if you want to filter some uh, uh, some of the records you can use the filter if you want to implement if condition or switch or until you can use this uh, activities and uh, perform that uh, data flows okay so we have one more thing here that is a uh, data flow uh, here we cannot do any data transformation but if you want to do any data transformation you need to go with the data flow okay if i for example here you can see here the data flows will be there but uh, if you say new data flow it will automatically create a data flow here so what this data flow will do is it will ask you to add the source and destination and all let me add a source uh, we have already created a source data set right let me add the uh, same uh, source so i'm choosing the source data set i know it is because i didn't save this uh, source data sets let me save this the so publishing is nothing but uh, saving my work okay so i saved everything now i want to uh, create a data flow here
let me create a new data store. Okay, I got it because uh, this is a binary file, right? Uh, uh, that binary file, anyway, we cannot do any transformation. I forgot that uh, the type that I chose. So if uh, your data set is uh, any CSV or Parquet like that means Parquet also you cannot uh, uh, transform, right? Uh, if it is a CSV or any of the file system, uh, which is going to have the data, that files you can uh, do the transformation. So for that, what you can do is uh, you can add that as a source. You can add multiple sources also. Then you can do the transformation here. For example, if you want to join the two data sources, you can join this. If you want to do any split, if you want to check uh, whether data exists in any one of this, or you want to union it, you can do it. And these are all some uh, schema change to the data set, source data set you can do. Okay, you can uh, derive particular columns, list of columns you want, pivoting, unpivoting, all those things. And this filtration, sorting, and all you can do. But these are all not a, a complex transformation. These are all some basic inbuilt transformation only you can do. Okay. If you want to really do a complex transformation, then you need to uh, use Databricks for this or Azure Synapse uh, Studio for a complex transformation where you can um, write your uh, PySpark or Scala code. Even SQL codes also you can write and do the complex transformation. Okay. So that is how uh, we use this uh, data factory to create our pipeline for data movement and uh, the basic data transformation. So I hope you all uh, understand that the basic uh, components that involves in the building of the pipeline. Any doubts? Uh, I'm open for discussion now. Harun Riaz here, am I audible? Yes, yes. Uh, one quick question. So uh, in this case, the file name was static, so it was easy for us to create a source and sync. But uh, mm -hmm. let's the file is uploaded on daily basis by the client and it has a prefix or suffix with date stamp in it. So mm -hmm. in that, how will we create variable and how will it auto resolve? Harun? OK, good question. Thanks for asking, Jias. So that is like, this is a very basic uh, uh, pipeline that I explained to you, right? Uh, what Riaz is asking is the uh, actual production pipeline where you don't know uh, what kind of files they are pushing, okay? Uh, on daily basis, they might push a file with uh, suffix as a date like that. So in that case, uh, how you can configure this, if you click on the canvas, you can see the parameter and variable, okay? So you can create a variable names for your files, okay? For example, at the end, you can uh, specify current date, Okay, or else you can create a parameter, means you can uh, parameterize your pipeline itself. Uh, instead of uh, uh, hard coding the source data set and destination data set here, you can parameterize the pipeline itself. You can have the values in the parameter level. So once you created the parameter and variable, when you are creating a trigger, at that time it will ask uh, for which parameter you want to run this uh, data factory. Okay. So on, on that uh, particular case, you can use uh, which parameter you want and which variable you want. Like that, you can configure your uh, data factory. Yes. Well, thank you, Harun. So there is something called trigger here, right? Uh, so why is this trigger? Is, uh, so once you completed the development phase, you want to move this code to production. That time, uh, uh, this uh, pipeline should run on daily basis at some time, on daily basis or hourly basis. Okay. So in that case, you want to add a trigger for this. Uh, trigger now means it will just trigger now itself. That means uh, again a debug kind of thing. Now I'm going to create a new trigger. I'm going to create a new trigger. I'm just keeping a uh, name as uh, hourly trigger, okay? That means this pipeline should run every hour. As Riaz asked, a uh, client is going to push a file to that uh, source uh, on every hourly basis or every minutes basis, whatever it is. But uh, my requirement is on every, every hour, this pipeline should run move the data from the source to destination, okay? So for that, I, I'm going to create a trigger. So start date from today and uh, time zone, choose your time zone. It is asking every minutes or every hour, every day, every week or every month, okay? So I'm going to say every hour, every one hour, okay? So after creating this trigger, what will happen? This pipeline will run every one hour and do it uh, activity, whatever the activity inside it, it will perform that. Okay, any doubt in this trigger part? Okay, if you all are clear, then I'm fine. I'm open for uh, any questions from your side. 